Hello, welcome to the Monday, January 27th, 2020 edition of the Science and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Augusta, Georgia. On Friday, Citrix made available the last patches for the Citrix ADC and Citrix Gateway vulnerability CVE 2019-19781. The last patch released was for version 10.5 and with this patch you have now patches available for all currently still supported versions of Citrix ADC, Citrix Gateway and Citrix SD-WAN. Of course the big question in everybody's mind is are you already compromised? The quick answer is, well, uh, that depends. Uh, if you apply the workaround before Christmas, then you're probably okay. If you waited with the workaround until after about January 6th, then chances are that you have been compromised. Now, I mentioned on Friday that Citrix and FireEye came up with a scanner to check if your system has been compromised. This scanner is not perfect. If you have a system that uh, is vulnerable, it's exposed and you didn't apply any workaround, you're just applying the patch now, then I would say it's pretty certain that that system has gotten compromised. Now, the FireEye tool is certainly a useful tool. I don't want to uh, diminish its value here, but be aware if it shows you that the system was compromised, then please do not just remove the artifacts that it finds likely you got compromised by several exploits some of them may be detected by the tool some of them will not the only way i would use this FireEye tool is if it shows that you are compromised rebuild the system from scratch the worst way you could possibly use the FireEye tool is if it does detect that the system got compromised, you're now going ahead, you're cleaning all the artifacts that the tool points out, and then you run it again, and it no longer shows any symptoms of compromise, so now you're believing you're secure. That's not how the tool is designed, and that would certainly leave you open to all kinds of persistent mechanisms that this tool just cannot detect. Just about a bit over a week ago, Microsoft reported about an unpatched vulnerability in Internet Explorer that was already exploited in target attacks. One of the recommendations that Microsoft put out was to essentially disable uh, jscript.dll. This DLL supposedly has little impact and from what I heard that's pretty much true but apparently there is one significant problem that you may run into if you are disabling this DLL and that's USB printing. At least HP printers are reported to no longer work after you apply this particular workaround. Not sure if they still work over the network. Uh, according to what I have heard, they will still work on network. It's really more the USB printing part that's affected by disabling this DLL. Again, this was sort of a temporary workaround fix that Microsoft uh, published with the specific caveat that it may affect some operations of the system. And I guess USB printing is one of them. And the Department of Homeland Security's Industrial Control System CERT uh, lists a number of six different vulnerabilities in GE healthcare equipment. What makes this sort of interesting is that many of these vulnerabilities, well, you're sort of used to find in home-based routers and other Soho devices, sad that they also show up in medical equipment. Probably the easiest to exploit examples are a static SSH key and a static VNC password that's published in the documentation for these devices and of course could easily be obtained. But then there are also some goodies like for example Webmin. Webmin is still actively maintained and it's well maintained. Yes, it had a rich history of vulnerabilities, but the version that's installed on these devices, version 1.25, 
life. Best I can tell is it was released somewhere around 2005. So this particular product is now 15 years old or 14 years old. So plenty of vulnerabilities that have been published in this product since then. Credentials for SMB are also static and then there are a couple other little bit more obscure bugs I would say like a keyboard driver issues where an attacker could essentially just take over the keyboard remotely. Well, and that's it for today. And by the way, we use a lot of different ways to distribute this podcast, even YouTube, even though I don't really find that very useful, no video for this podcast. But for example, Alexa's Flash Briefing or various other channels, if something is missing or so, just drop me a note and uh, I'll try to add it to whatever distribution method you prefer. That's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.